While designing a dimensional table, the first question that you should ask yourself is, if the values of the attributes of this table changes with respect to time, am I going to keep track of those changes? In other words, am I going to preserve the history of this dimensional table? Now, what does the change in the attributes of the dimension table mean? Let's say you have a customer dimension table and there is a marital status column on that dimension table. Now obviously, the value of the marital status for each customer will undergo changes. Like a customer who was single before, now his status changed from single to married. When such changes happen, of course, you will need to update your dimension table with the latest available information. However, the question is when you update this table, are you going to also keep track of the past values of this attribute or are you just going to update it with the latest information that is available to you? Now obviously this is a question for the business. The business should decide whether they need to preserve the history of the attributes of a particular table or if they are just going to ignore the past values of this attribute and always keep this table updated only with the latest available information. Now whatever you decide, you have sort of two main ways of designing this dimension table. You could design it as a slowly changing dimension type 1 table, in which case you will not be able to store the history or preserve the history of the attributes. or you could also design it as a slowly changing dimension type 2 table. Slowly changing dimension type 2 or SCD type 2 table, you will actually be able to keep the history of this particular attribute. In this video, we are gonna look at SCD type 1 table. I'm going to show you how to design a SCD type 1 table and in the next video, we'll take on the SCD type 2 table. So let's get started. Imagine your data is coming from a online transaction processing systems or OLTP system. Let us say you have a customer table on your OLTP system and for the sake of simplicity, let's assume that this table has only three columns. The customer ID, the customer name and the marital status of the customer. Now further assume that you need to load this data into a customer dimension table in your online analytical processing system or OLAP system. So inside your OLAP system, you have a customer dimension table and this customer dimension table has all these columns like name, marital status, etc. And along with these columns, this table should also have a customer key, which is a surrogate key in the data warehousing site. Now in the customer dimension table, you should also store the ID, the source ID, that you are getting from the OLTP system. So this is your setup. You have a source system, you have a customer table in the source system, and you need to load this data into a dimension table, which is a SCD type one dimension. Now, since this is a SCD type one dimension, you should always keep your target dimension table updated with the information that is coming from the source system. Typically, we do it through a merge operation. And the logic very simply looks something like this. If the ID in the source system is already present in your target system in the source ID column, in that case, we will simply update the target table. However, if the ID coming from the source system is not present in the target table under the source ID column, then we assume that this is a new record. So we will insert this new record from the source system to the target table. Now, usually your source system is a different database and your OLAP system where you are maintaining your dimension table, that's a different database. Generally, it's a common practice to extract the data from the source system and put it into an intermediate system known as staging area. So every day we will extract the data from our source system and put it in our um, staging area table and we will update our target data warehouse from this staging area table. While loading data to our data warehouse from the staging area, we will follow 
this logic that I mentioned over here. Often staging and data warehouses are maintained in two different schema uh, under the same database. And then we can use any ETL tool or SQL to perform this merge operation. Now I'm going to show you how to do this merge operation using SQL. But before we do that, let's recap this scenario. What we are trying to do over here is we are trying to create a dimension table in our OLAP database. This is going to be a SCD type 1 dimension. In a SCD type 1 dimension, we do not keep the history. We always update the attributes in our dimension schema with the latest information that is coming from our source system. In order to update our source system, we use a merge operation and the logic of the merge operation is if the ID present in the source system, the value of the ID present in the source system is already existing in the target system table. In that case, we update the record. And if the ID is not present in the source ID column of the customer dimension, in that case, we insert a new record. In terms of doing this operation in practice, we use a staging schema. A staging schema is an intermediate schema that sits in between the source schema and the target data warehouse schema. We extract information as it is from the source system and load them into the staging area. Once the data is loaded in the staging area, then we perform the merge operation to ultimately load the data to our dimension table. Okay, I have opened up a SQL terminal and what I'm gonna do is I'll create two tables, one staging table for the customer and then we will create a dimension table for customer and then I will write the merge logic to see how the merge actually works. So first I'm gonna create a customer staging table. Remember that the customer staging table will have exactly the same structure as of our source customer table. So our source customer table has a customer ID, customer name, and customer marital status. All right, let's execute this and our customer table is created. Of course, our customer table doesn't have any data as of now. As you can see, there is no data on this table right now. So let's put some data into it. Let's say we have a customer called John and John is single. Let's insert this data. And now if we see the customer table, we have our customer record in the staging table. So this is our staging table structure. On the data warehousing side, we'll have a customer dimension table. I'll just quickly create the customer dimension table structure. What columns are we going to put in the customer dimension table? Well, usually in the dimension schema, you have a dimension key, which is a surrogate key that you create in the dimension table. Let's call this surrogate key as cast key. This will be the primary key of the table. So let's declare this particular column as the primary key. We'll have the same um, attributes that we have in the staging table. Uh, for example, we'll have the name and marital status. We'll also have the source ID. So we have this table created. So, so far we have got two tables. This is our staging table. It has exactly the same structure as of our source system table and then we have created a customer dimension table in the customer dimension table we have couple of extra columns for example we have a surrogate key column which is the customer key which i for this purpose i have set it as a primary key and i have set it as auto increment so that i don't have to uh, you know put the values for this particular column the database will automatically increment the values of this column starting from one and the ID column that we have in the source, we are storing that ID column in our target dimension table as well. Um, however, we are calling it the source underscore ID. Um, now our job is to write a logic which will perform the merge operation. Merge operation will ensure that if the same record is coming from the source system, 
the dimension table record will get updated and if there is a new record then the new record will get inserted in the dimension table. How do we know that if a record is a new record? Well, we compare it with the ID field. If the ID is already present in the table, in the dimension table, then we know that this is an old record and we just update it. And if the ID is not present, then we will insert it. So as you can see, the merge operation really has two different steps. One step is to first identify the new records and insert them. And the second step is to do the update operation for the existing records. So let's do the first step first. So in order to identify the new records, basically what we need to do, we need to perform a join between the staging table and the dimension table. Now let's understand what we have written over here. We are selecting the ID, name and the marital status um, columns from our source table, our staging table, with the condition that the particular record should not exist in the target customer dimension table. In fact, we are using where not exist clause um, and under where not exist, we have basically uh, written this joining condition. So if T is our target table and S is our source table, customer staging table is our source table and the customer dimension table is our target table. So all we are saying over here is that if the target table source ID, which means the source ID that we have in the dimension table, if that source ID contains a record which is there in the um, source table ID field, then we do not want that record to come, which is why we have where not exist. If the record doesn't exist, only then this record will come. Now, we simply need to insert this record in the dimension table, right? That's, that's what we are going to do, right? If the record doesn't exist in the dimension table, we are simply going to insert that record to the dimension table. So let's write an insert statement. So basically, we are saying that insert all the records in customer dimension table under source id name and marital status columns where the record doesn't exist in the um, dimension table now let me execute this query and then we will see this new record getting inserted into the customer dimension table so we have the name we have the marital status we have the source id and this customer key is a surrogate key which is auto generated right auto incremented so this was the first portion which is identifying the new records right but remember that we also require another uh, part of the logic here which is basically to make sure that if the record already exists in the dimension table then we are just updating the record so we need to write an update statement so we are gonna update the customer dimension table right and um, we are gonna update it uh, based on our customer staging table and then we set the values of the columns accordingly so what are we doing here we are basically updating the customer dimension table based on our source table and we are um, taking the value from the source table and putting it to the target uh, column for example, the target name will get updated with the source name, target marital status will get updated with the source marital status. And we need to put a certain predicate, right? We need to put certain conditions on which we are going to do this update, right? So the condition uh, that we have over here is that we are only going to do this update when, when there is a matching ID, right? All right, so our update and insert logic are ready now we are going to simulate the source site changes remember that in the source site currently we have only one data which is mr john um, and the status of marital status of mr john is single now let's make some changes in the source system okay and then we will run these queries and see how our dimension table gets updated right 
So I'm going to make two changes to the source system. First of all, I'm going to change the marital status of John from single to married. And I'm also going to insert a new record. Okay, so let's do that. First, let me insert the new record. Um, so I'll use the same query over here, insert into customer staging. Now let's say I have a new record with Mary and Mary is single as well. So, and the source ID is let's say 10. So now if you look back to the customer staging table, I have two records now, John and Mary. Jo Mary is still single and John is single. Now let me update John to Merit. So let's run this query and see what happens. I've executed this query and let's see the data of the customer staging table once again. As you can see, John is right now, the status has been changed to merit and there is a new record Mary with marital status single. However, this is, remember that this is our source system data. What do we have in our dimension table? Well, our dimension table still has only one record and observe that John's marital status is still single. Now let's execute merge logic and see what happens to our dimension table. So I'm going to execute the first part of the merge logic now. Okay. And then I'll execute the second part of the merge logic. Okay. And now let's see our customer dimension tables data once again. As you can see, in our customer dimension table, Mary has got inserted in a new row um, and the customer key is 2. The source ID corresponds to the source ID that we have in the source table. And also notice that John's marital status has got updated to merit. So with this example, you can see how we can manage our dimension table, our slowly changing dimension type 1 tables with the merge operations. As you can see that we are not keeping any history on the dimension table. For example, we do not know um, until what date John was single and from when did his marital status change to merit. All we are keeping uh, in this table is the current status of their um, current status of individual records, right? Now, of course, the merge operations can be done through SQL. It can be done through many different ETL tools. Even within SQL, also different databases have different SQL dialects. I have used uh, MariaDB and it uses the MySQL dialect um, to show you how the merge operation can be done. So I hope this video was useful. In the next video, we will take a look into the SCD type 2 dimension tables.